Last one I have on here is our chlorine dioxide. So our chlorine dioxide T-tip formula, sodium chloride plus the acid equals chlorine dioxide. And then we have a DDBSA in there as well. Ours are using lactic acid as the activator. Um, so benefits of chlorine dioxide products, the sodium chloride plus acid equals chlorine dioxide. Again, the uh, acidium, acidified sodium chloride is another name for uh, chlorine dioxide, so a couple different ways it's known, and it's killing through the cell membranes. It basically inactivates the bacteria from the inside out, uh, prohibits anaerobic and aerobic bacteria resistance, so we're doing very, very well. Anything greater than that 600 log or 600 ppm, we are at a very high log kill at 15 seconds, so very quick, very effective, uh, works very, very well and probably the closest out there as far as broad, broad spectrum close to uh, the iodine that way. So as effective on contagious mastitis as iodine from a Irish study done last year, uh, shown on streptococcal and staphylococcal, and then kills broad spectrum bacteria, works independently from pH. So it's ideal on farms with high organic loads, uh, not affected by environmental. So this is working very, very well or some of the others we saw were the high organic loads were gonna be a, an issue. The chlorine dioxide works and continues to kill through all of that. So this is nothing like chlorine. Uh, the name gives a little bit of a deceptive feel to it there, but it is nothing like chlorine. So, the lactic acid activator, uh, that is our uh, product that we're using. So we've got the alpha hydroxy acid, it's exfoliating dry skins, it's helping with the hyperkeratosis, and it's considered a skin conditioner. So competitors, a lot of times, will be including this in their conditioning package percentage. We do not. Our conditioning package percentage is including just the added conditioners that we're putting. So just hitting a little bit on that chlorine versus chlorine dioxide. We're showing the couple of options here for uh, chlorine dioxide. The, you, you can see as you look down the list here, uh, they're both an oxidizer. The chlorine dioxide is unbound with organics where the chlorine does bind with them, uh, effectively killing, them off, killing off the chlorine at that point. And it works independent of pH where the chlorine is ineffective on a pH higher than eight, doesn't bind with the carbons, the chlorine dioxide um, binds with the, on the chlorine and already at a neutral pH versus requires acid to neutralize. Kills from the inside with the chlorine dioxide and kills from the outside from the chlorine. The biggest factor that we need to be looking at when it comes to T-tip, uh, kills and disables in 15 seconds where the kill time for E. coli and with chlorine is a minute. Uh, and you can see there on crypto, 10 days. Nobody can wait that long to, in our industry. So our chlorine dioxide T-tips, uh, here's just a few of the first part of our line. We've got extra blue, extra guard, and extra seven. Uh, these are powerful germicides, contains the, the extra blue as a 6% emollient package with, with lanolin. The extra seven gets all the benefits of extra blue, but with some additional emollients and our extra guard, uh, that's our barrier uh, as a thin film barrier. So giving a good quick dry, even for a barrier product uh, without the residual tackiness and works very, very well forming that second skin. Show a little bit of the details on just one of those three products, the extra blue uh, with a little bit of the data on it. So mixing rate, one to one on this, amalgam package, 6%, 4% glycerin, 1% lanolin, 1% propylene glycol, has uh, 1,700 to 2,000 ppm of uh, kill. And, and as we stated earlier, that is good all the way down to 600 ppm, more killing in the, that really strong log kill range. Uh, and we started a higher rate because we know that over time it will 
eventually drop, but we're looking for that good heavy kill, even in those organic loads, and to be able to work with it. So product life of 24 hours, uh, usage for both pre and post, and comparable products showing a few of the comparables out there from uh, 4XLA, Utter Gold, Gladiator, Vanquish, all, all competitors in this one. And it's got a higher PPM, so some of the marketing strengths, got Lanolin, DDBSA for additional kill. Good blue color, very strong looking, uh, very easy to see. Makes a great foam and doesn't do a lot of stain. The other side of our line of T-tips is the XT line of T-tips. These are ex made as extended time T-tips, made into once they're mixed to last a little bit longer. Uh, we have these available in a barrier, in a pre-post, uh, and then in a couple of concentrates in uh, XT Ultra and XT 22C. So our concentrates can be concentrated all the way down to a 1 to 1 to 56 ratio, uh, giving you a good pre-dip kill. Uh, very effective as far as getting it out there. Can be added uh, emollient packages to it and making it a pre-dip or a post-dip option at a good effective cost. So it's economical alternative to uh, iodines and working very, very well for keeping those costs down uh, and still giving you a very broad spectrum kill, very quick kill, uh, very good products in that. Available in the XT Barrier and XT Armor, two different versions of our barrier products, uh, one carrying a little quicker drying uh, film than the other, uh, but a couple of different options. We can definitely help you out to find the right one that works for you. Again, we'll just hit on one of the products here as far as uh, some of the more in-depth details on it. Our XT1 pre-post, the XT products versus the extra products that I showed on the last slide have a slight different formulation. So this one is a little bit longer lasting. So we start at an 11 to 1300 PPM range. This is giving us an ability to uh, work well and hold it a, at a good PPM for a longer period of time. Because this is lasting multiple days, we don't need to start out at that higher uh, 1,700 to 2,000 PPM range. Works very, very well in this range. Again, killing it its strengths down to that five to 600 PPM range at, at high uh, kill rates. Comparable products on this one would be Valiant uh, and Encore. And marketing strengths, we're definitely holding PPM for multiple days. Uh, we don't put an actual number of days there. We can discuss that based on farm needs and such because, of course, uh, heat, temperature, conditions can all cause that to vary, whether we're mixing it in the dead of winter or the middle of a 110-degree day in a utility room can, can cause some uh, strength changes in that. So uh, emollient packages are really strong, strong colors to that. It's year-round usage. Great product running through robots. We're seeing this with a lot of success on a lot of robot farms. And it def gives a good, clean, soft heats, great exfoliate. XT22C, this is uh, one of our concentrate products. Same PPM range when mixed to the concentrate. Uh, still holding for multiple days. Less handling and freight because of price. Great cost savings for small to medium farm size farms. And when we go to our larger farms, this one uh, works well in the sense that it's our most concentrated, one to one to 43, up to 58 mixing rates. Uh, emollient packages can be from half a percent, uh, and, and we can add uh, additional emollient package to that if we want to be able to, to work with that. So it can be blended with additional emollients, uh, holds the PPM again for multiple days, it's less handling and freight because you can take one barrel of this product of parts A and B and make uh, uh, totes and totes of this. So great for foam dip or spray, and it's available in multiple colors or even without color if you're using it in a, a uh, spray over a, a deck spray application where you, you don't need color at all. Comparable products would be the GEA, IntelliBlend chlorines, and Valiant Pre products like those. So RTU versus concentrate. Basically just wanted to give some some hits on that because concentrates are becoming more and more popular uh, and people seem to be polarized one side or the other as to whether I love RTU ready to use products 
or I love the concentrates because of the, the flexibility it gives me. But if we look at the RTU, the positive for it, it is the best practice for top quality. Uh, it's made in a plant in superior conditions, leaves room for strong, effective product variables that way that uh, we don't have that because it's it's made in the top level of conditions. So least amount of work for the dealerships and for the uh, the farms as far as preparation. There's no mixing, no anything to be done. It just comes and you put it out there. Uh, chlorine dioxide, you may have to mix the two parts together, but that's it. No ad added water, no uh, relying on additional pumps and, and rates at that. So limits the opportunity for on-farm variables, water quality pump issue. The RTU negative, cost of product, uh, co container costs. Containers are becoming more and more expensive, probably double what they were a year ago now. So every container that we send out uh, is, is in that cost. So if we can reduce those costs, it definitely gets better. Freight costs, if we look at it in the sense with RTU, we're moving a lot of water around. If we can send that concentrated and use on-farm water, the costs a lot of times now are overcoming the positives for the RTUs. And then uh, repeated trips, meaning that if you're a dealer, you're having to visit that farm several times for high volume accounts. If you're the high volume account, you're having to keep an eye on your dealer to make sure that they are keeping stuff in there for you. And the concentrate positives, the least cost based on amount of volume in one container. Uh, allows for varied product costs for seasonal environmental. So you can adjust very quickly and easily how strong your PPM you're going to be or what kind of emollient package you're going to use based on the weather or the seasonal conditions, what it might be. It, it's space savings for everybody. And, and just to give a little breakdown on costs, whether you're paying for the freight to get to you or not, that freight to get it from one spot to the next is very expensive. So when we look at uh, freight costs to get somewhere, and we're looking at our XT Ultra pre-dip, even at $80 a pallet for freight cost, when we start to factor all of this in and the way that that can be made and concentrate, we're looking at a savings of about 30 cents a gallon, and that's on a minimal freight rate. That $80 a pallet's a low rate. If it's going across the country or going in a long distance, it becomes more and more expensive, way, way beyond that. So looking at those costs and knowing that the, the containers and the freight rates and all that are all part of the the factor, the concentrates start to become very, very uh, valuable. So water quality can be a negative. So that it can be overcome uh, by taking care of that water quality and doing a little bit. You can uh, take care of it that way. <coughs> Excuse me. Pump systems. So problems in accuracy. So looking at that as a negative, pump systems having problems in inaccuracies on the dairy are always a concern. Uh, we can overcome that with uh, systems that are tracking it. And including du duplicate systems and uh, systems that are fully automated through all this. So another thing is farm interference. So if you've got people that are pushing buttons and hitting these all the time, that can be overcome with training. And there can also be pumps that systems that it can be locked out as well. So XT22C and XT Ultra concentrates. Just showing one of our systems here. Uh, this is one that is using a Part A and B and an emollient package. So we can add a couple of our emollient package. Premium 73 includes lanolin. Uh, and then glycerin 80 is now a actual mix of glycerin and sorbitol. Uh, so that one uh, will work as well. We can build formulas on farm. We can adjust the amount of chlorine dioxide for PPM for pre and post. We can adjust the emollient package for uh, the climate and the usage from half a percent to 15 percent and we can share all of this data because it's all stored in the system so the systems will shut down if they're not making the correct range of product uh, they do it does use a water meter to tell what's going through there so as long as the right product is hooked up to the container if it if it stops pumping product or changes the amount it will vary and adjust as needed so it takes away some of those concerns as to a system not working correctly. When it doesn't work, it shuts down and there's some very quick, easy troubleshooting issues. So to summarize, we need to clean the teat first and then apply the dip. Uh, dip is to disinfect teats to reduce mastitis and possibly adding skin conditioning at the same time. And we want to work with the farms to find what's causing the mastitis, not just working with. And 
Iodine has been number one on the chain since the 50s, uh, but due to costs, top quality comparables, and the changing farm landscape, non-iodines are growing at a rate of up to five times the current rate of iodine. So keep an eye on your other products besides the iodines and uh, take a look at them for options as the costs are changing. You've got a lot of good options out. 